I am fast losing my trust and confidence in some of the benchmarks out there when it comes to large language models. This is not to undermine the efforts of anyone, especially these researchers, um, but there are few claims which really seem very hard to believe. Or should I put it in more polite way that when something is claim, claimed in a paper, they should make it more specific and clear so that we know what they are talking about. For instance, look at this paper. In this paper, the researchers have given this table which shows that this model which is called as SWE Llama has beaten, this 13 million size has beaten GPT-4 on these tasks like Astropy, Django and few of the other coding tasks. Now, just look at this um, and they could, not they could I should say, but someone has been claiming on social media that this model has beaten GPT-4 in some of the coding tasks. Now that is a tall claim. I have all the respect in the world for this model and all the other open source model, but the fact of the matter remains that GPT-4 is still the leader and you cannot just simply pick one task and start claiming that the model has beaten GPT-4. Anyway, having said that, still I believe that this paper and whatever has been mentioned in this paper is quite a good deal. Um, so let me give you a brief on this paper, what exactly this is saying. This introduces SWE Bench, uh, which is a benchmark framework for evaluating language models on software engineering tasks using real GitHub issues and pull requests from popular Python repositories. This innovative approach requires models to edit code bases to resolve issues, which is a complex task involving understanding and coordinating changes across multiple code elements. Despite testing with state-of-the-art models, the research finds that even the most advanced models struggle to resolve anything but the simplest issues, highlighting the need for further advancement in language model to handle real-world software engineering challenges effectively. And that makes sense to some extent. Now, to address these challenges, the author have fine-tuned models specifically for this task, creating variants that show improved performance but still face significant limitations, particularly with complex issues requiring extensive code-based modifications. The evaluation of these models reveals the difficulty of software engineering tasks for current language model, suggesting a path forward that involves more sophisticated model training and evaluation framework. This is pretty interesting. So it means that for every language and for every task, we will have a new fine-tuned model. Seems quite a work to me. Anyway, the paper underscores a gap between current language model capabilities and the requirements of real-world software engineering tasks. And by providing a detailed construction of the SWE bench benchmark and thorough analysis of model preference, it sort of sets the stage for a future research aimed at creating more intelligent, practical and aut autonomous language models capable of addressing the nuanced and complex nature of software engineering problems. But having said that, this table, it's a bit hard for me to digest because you know, if you think about it, if you really become very, very task specific, it's really easy to beat GPT-4 locally because all you need to do is to pick a niche subject or task that GPT-4 is untrained or in, specifically trained against, then fine tune a local model on that niche subject, construct a benchmark that only tests that specific niche subject and claim victory over GPT-4, for example. You can, GPT-4 doesn't know about Fahad Mirza and his channel. Or maybe he doesn't know uh, or it doesn't know about uh, my life and my career and all that stuff. Maybe here and there a bit. But if you ask GPT-4 who is Fahad Mirza, that is not going to tell you. But if I fine tune any model, the open source one, maybe I would, I would just pick Tiny Lama. I will train it on my whole life. Then I <laughs> put them side by side and then ask the, the question answers about Fahad Mirza. GPT-4 would definitely be at loss, whereas my fine-tuned Tiny Llama would G beat GPT-4 by a huge margin. I know it's a very simple an example, but I'm just saying that, I mean, if you are fine-tuning 
a local model to test on some specific task and then you are also showing the same data to GPT-4 and then if GPT-4 is doesn't know the answer really doesn't mean that this fine-tuned model is better than GPT-4 anyway these are just my two cents but nonetheless a very interesting thought that um, fine-tuning some local model on a very niche specific task and then saying that okay uh, this should be you know uh, better than GPT-4 is interesting. Another thing which really jumps out of this, look at Cloud2. Cloud2, for example, like, look at the Django. So Cloud2's score is 6.15, GPT-4 just 2.5. Very hard to believe. So that is where, you know, I'm a bit, um, that is where I was saying that my confidence was a bit shaken on these benchmarks. Anyway, but still a good project. And if you are the creator or researcher of this project uh, and if you want to clarify or you think that I have just totally got it all wrong, I'm very ha happy to host you. Maybe we'll do a fireside chat and you can explain it a bit further uh, or maybe feel free to put it in the comments uh, because it's an open forum. Always willing to learn and re-educate myself. So please feel free to comment or if you, even if you're not um, the this researcher and you are just um, a viewer please feel free to put your thoughts in the comments and let me know and if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you already have subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching